Hey there, what's going on? Welcome to fourth video of 100 Web Projects series. In previous video, which I highly recommend you to watch it if you haven't yet, we created these horizontal tabs. And this video revolves around building this vertical tab using HTML, CSS, and vanilla JavaScript. All right, so without any further ado, let's get started. I have my code editor already opened in here. I'm gonna start creating the index.html file. And right here, it's going to have a title of vertical tab and this is going to be the tab container inside of which we're going to have a row and this is call 3 and then call 9. So what's going on right here? Uh, just to look at it from a non-technical or non-coding standpoint, I already created this diagram. Alright, so I'm going to stack them side by side so you can see what's going on in here. This tab container right here, it is divided into three columns and nine columns respectively. That's a total of 12 columns. And this row right here says that there is only one row. And if you duplicate it twice, then that would be two rows. But right now it is only one row. All right, so the reason why we did it this way is that to know exactly where to place the buttons and exactly to know where we are going to place the tab content. So. In bakery screens, which in this video we are going to target the desktop screens, this 992 pixels tab container is going to be divided into two parts. The first three columns are going to be the buttons and the rest of it, they are going to be the tab content. So how do we translate it into code? I'm going to go and flip back to here in our code editor and actually run this in live server. All right, so we don't have anything. I'm gonna stack them side by side so you can see what is going on in here. All right, so in here, I'm gonna create a button with a class of button, data-target. So data-target is duplicated three times. In here, it's going to be HTML, and this is the HTML button. Then this is CSS. And it's going to be the CS button. And finally, JavaScript. All right, so as you can see, the three buttons are created right here. Now, let's create the tab content. And this is tab dash content times three. All right, they're all going to have an ID. And also, I'm going to place a title and content right there. A tree for the title and P with some dummy content right there. All right, back into here. This is HTML. And make sure that the ID of this one is exactly the same as the button. So that this button knows that I'm targeting the tab content with ID of HTML. All right, now this one for the CSS. And finally, this one for the JS or JavaScript. So this is how it is going to look. And now we are going to create the style.css file. I believe I already did that. Nope, I didn't. So style.css. We already did necessary plumbing and wiring between those. So in a style.css, I'm going to target the body and add a margin 0, then a padding of 0 on family Sigu UI, a height of 100 vertical height, display this as grid, and place items to the center. That way everything is going to be in center vertically and horizontally. All right, then we have the tab container that's going to have a width of, as I said, 992 pixels. Oh God, I can't type. Well, then there is this row displayed as flex, so call 3 and call 9 will be a stack side by side, call 3, and finally call 9. All right, so I don't have everything on top of my mind, so call 3, I'm going to do just some quick calculations right here. 100 divided by 12 columns, that is 8.3. All right, 8.3 times 3, that's 24.9. So call tree is going to have 24.9% and call 9 is going to have a weight of, I believe this 75.1. Yep, 
yep 75.1 now here this is going to be 75.1 percent i'm gonna zoom out so this is how it is gonna look all right now we need to style the buttons as well display this as block i don't think even that's necessary but by the way a margin 0 0.5 rim and zero uh, then give it a weight of 100 percent and also a padding like zero point i'm gonna go with seven five rim all right you can see that they are glued to each other so just to prevent that i'm gonna again target call three and call nine right here and add a padding of 0 0.5 rim and now you can see that it looks better all right get rid of the border and also get rid of the outline from there none well that looks good and the button which is active has had a box shadow for this one pixel for the horizontal offset for the vertical offset and then four pixels it's going to be blur in this disparate I don't know but let's go with this one and flip back to index.html let's add the active class to this one and its corresponding tab content which is right here make sure this is the CSS button so the CSS tab content content should be targeted in here there we go active and then if I go back here uh, remove the background color from here it's going to be totally white like so and then if I zoom this a little bit, you can see this is how it is going to look. All right, mm, I'm going to make this 7.5 rim. And also add a border 1 pixel solid, CCC. There you go. Add a border radius of 3 pixels for this. And also the cursor is going to be pointer. And let's add a font size of 1.1 rim there. <coughs> All right, so... If I just zoom this out, this is how it is going to look. And for the tab content, there is nothing fancy here. It's just going to be displayed as none. But the tab content that is active is going to be displayed as block. All right, so I also forgot one more thing in here. You see, it's the HTML. We didn't add anything for the rest of it. Okay, there we go. Now the CSS and here is its content all right now we need to create the script.js file and don't forget to wire it with index.html um, source script.js all right so back into here in the script.js i'm gonna grab all the buttons here this document.query select or all and then there is the button now looping through every one of those buttons so we're gonna hook an event listener that's going to be an a click event listener add event listener on click I'm gonna run this arrow function right here all right button dot class list dot add active so now if I click HTML and JavaScript you see that they are activated but before that they are activated i want to remove all the active class from the previous buttons and how i can do that is buttons dot for each again button and button dot class list dot remove the class of active like so now if i click html you see that the active class is removed from the previous ones and as a final step when i click html its corresponding content should be shown right here and how do we do that is First, I'm going to console.log something very important in here. Data set dot, dot target. All right. Now, if I just. Okay. In, in console, if I click HTML, you see that this HTML, which is actually the value that comes right from this data target. There we go. This is going to come up in here. So we will, we will be using this button dot data set dot target right here we're going to be using it to actually target that specific tab content and show it in the screen so document.query selector and then button.dataset.target.classlist.add again i'm going to add the class of active to it all right now if i click html you see that html is shown and the same is true for the javascript and again the same for the button 
I'm gonna also grab all the tab contents right here document.query selector all and then there's the tab content and finally right at here tab contents dot for each tab content make sure that this tab content is the singular form of this tab contents which is the plural by the way then tab content dot class list dot remove class of active there we go now if i click html css and javascript it looks pretty much identical to the one we created earlier right here let's maximize that there we go this looks pretty darn good that was it for this video guys i hope you enjoyed it if you did you know what to do and if you don't and hated it let me know in the comment section below how i can improve it and do it better next time thank you for watching